I'm going to work on a foot roll for this character now. As all I've got is the ability to move the character, but I don't have the ability to roll the character's feet off of the ground. In fact, I'm always going to be stuck counter-rotating the feet to prevent them from crashing through. While I'm fine animating with this technique, it's always nice to have options. So what we're going to attempt to do here is blend this simple constraint with a foot roll and have the ability to blend between the two and even to blend into IK if we need to. At the moment we cannot blend into IK because we don't have our IK blend slider um, set up. Or it would be very easy to do it, but that's not what we're here for. What we actually need to do when we set up a foot roll, and I'm just going to set one up on this side and then mirror it across, is let's have a look at our explorer, is to first of all unhide the chain effectors. We need to be able to control the IK system of the, the character. Um, we need to control the, the toe bone and all of the bones through to the heel. And it's just the act of parenting that gives us the ability to make it uh, roll off of the ground from heel to toe. So I'm going to use some nulls to act as a base layer constraint because we're going to be constraining using pose constraints uh, to constrain all of these items except for the heel bone uh, to some constraint objects. So I'll duplicate this null five times because I'm going to need five of them. And I'll start off by turning them all into the icon I like to use for my kind of base layer constraints. Use these little pyramids. I'm going to size them down and just set them to zero, zero. And I'll just start matching up their transforms, their entire transforms, to these items up the foot. So I'll start at the tip, at the effector of the uh, of the foot, and match transforms to it. I'll middle click, and I'll match transforms to the first bone, the second bone. I'll match transforms, in this case, to the control. Now the reason I'm doing this is because the control is what's driving the IK right now, not the end effector. The end effector is actually constrained to this box, which is constrained to, or parented, as a child of this control here. So we really want to be controlling this control. So this is a control that's going to be blended on and off. The final uh, null is up to me. I have to place this at the heel of the character. So where I think where I think the heel will pivot. So let's go somewhere about maybe there. And the next thing I'm going to do is just give these guys names. So they're constraints. So this would be the left toe constraint. This would be the left um, ball one constraint. Left ball constraint. So that's the ball of the foot and this one here is ball one, so ball, ball one. And we have our left ankle constraint and our left heel constraint. It's not actually really a constraint, it's just going to be acting as a uh, as a parent, really, a parent object. We actually don't even need this object. Next I'm going to get some uh, zero controls that I can parent this whole system to. So I'm going to use the polygon cube and extract those edges. I'll just make sure I freeze the operator stack for the curve and delete the cube. And I'm going to match the entire transform, or sorry, in this case, match just the translation of these curves to the first bone in the toe or sorry, to the constraint in the toe. I'm going to size it down a little bit, get it to a manageable size, and freeze the scaling. And I'm going to duplicate this object four more times, and take each duplicate and match position to the constraint objects. We're not matching the rotation here because we're giving ourselves a nice Y up, X forward, a very uh, nice consistency between all of our controls. This last one here, I'll place where I want the heel to be. Let's 
say about there. Okay, so this one becomes my left heel control. This one becomes the left ankle control. Left ball. Left ball one and left toe control. Now the whole trick to this is just to parent it together um, properly. This object here acts as the rocker for the entire foot roll. It's what sets the heel rocking, and this one at the toe is going to set the toe rocking. So I'll start the hierarchy by taking the left toe control and dragging it onto the uh, left heel control. So already if I take this control, I get that. I need to also make the constraint object, in this case, the left toe constraint, a child of that same control as well. So this is carrying some strange transform values with it, and I don't actually want to use this as my uh, parent object for the next object in the hierarchy. So you basically parent the toe control and toe constraint to the left heel control. I then have to just take that toe control object, and I'm going to make the ball one object right in front of it, the control, a child of left toe control. So now I'm pulling the second control along, but I also need to pull along the constraint. So ball one control will also have a sibling, ball one constraint. So you can see the way that this hierarchy is starting to shape up. I'm then going to take ball one control, I'm going to make it the parent of ball control. So I'm kind of working backwards here, not kind of, I am working backwards. And of course, I also need the ball constraint uh, as a sibling as well, because um, the ball one control has to pull both of these objects along as children. I'll take the ankle constraint next and drop it onto the left ball control, and take the ankle constraint and drop it on there as well. So now we have our foot roll, and all of our control objects are nicely zeroed out, which is going to make it very easy for us to go in and uh, set up some kind of a driven parameter. These toe constraints, again, I'll probably just add into my unselectables group and decide how I want to, to deal with them a little bit later. In fact, later is now because I haven't actually constrained these objects. I haven't actually constrained the uh, effectors, bones, or in this case the control to my constraints. So I have them right here so I can actually just pick them right from my unselectables group. You just can't pick them in your viewport. So I'll take the end effector and I'm going to be using pose constraints here. I don't need compensation because they're already matched up through transforms and I'm going to pick the left toe constraint and I'll hold down control while I'm doing this so the uh, constraint property editor doesn't appear. I'll just middle click to repeat last command and constrain to left ball one. Take the left ball bone, Let's constrain it to the left ball constraint, and then I'll take my control and I'll make it a child of the left ankle constraint, or not make it a child, uh, a parent constraint of the left ankle constraint. So I've got a nice foot roll now where I can rock off of the heel. and also pivot off of the toe or the balls of the feet. I could even add in one more control to completely pivot off of the toe because right now I have that as well as pivoting from the back. So I can set the whole thing up on the other side by simply mirroring the objects over. So I'll take all of my controls, in fact I'll take all of these unselectables, I'll take my controls, I'm just going to have to hook them up over on the other side, but that's fine. That's all the parts we need. I'll mirror them across. repeat 
the same process. I can just run my renamer tool, look for the word left, replace it with the word right, and strip off the one on the end. So I'll do the same thing over here. Take the effector, constrain it to the right toe constraint, and move my way up. Uh, it looks like the centers here uh, haven't been mirrored over properly. So I'm just going to try undoing what I've done. I'll mirror them over again. Actually, don't need to mirror this control over at all. And I'll turn off the freeze negative scaling. So let's see if that helps. I'll run the renamer. And right away I'll test this uh, test this out. I'll do the constrained position or constrained pose. So the right toe constraint. There we go. That's all I need to do. to the right ball constraint and finally to the ankle constraint. So this one's still free here. My right ankle constraint seems to have been flipped and this object as well so I'm actually just going to go and find that right ankle constraint I'm going to match its transform to my control and then see if I can't uh, set that up try this. It still won't work because I haven't parented together the the objects. So I have to basically create the same hierarchy that I did uh, for the left uh, the left heel. So I'll find the left heel control and to it I will parent the right toe control and right toe constraint and just keep on moving down the list. I'll take the ball one control, ball one constraint, ball control and ball constraint. Oops. Parent it to the actual curve above it. And the right ankle constraint, like so. So it looks like we've got everything set up. I also grabbed the right ankle control in there as well. There we go. So I'll test this one out. That foot looks like it works there. It looks like we have both foot rolls working quite quite nicely. The only thing that's a little bit odd about this one here is that the control has a non-zero value so I can fix that quickly by temporarily cutting the right toe constraint and the right toe control out and just freezing the scaling and the rotation of the heel control and then I'll pull the right toe control back underneath it again and the right toe constraint. So we have right heel, right toe, ball one, 
right ball one control right ball control right ankle and yeah everything looks good let me get that uh, toe constraint in there as well okay so the next part will be tying all of this together and making uh, an interface that will allow us easier uh, access to the foot roll.